So it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Etienne Guénard. He's professor at University of Caen Normandy. Etienne uh, has begun his long career, scientific career, with his PhD at IPN Louvain-la-Neuve. It was in uh, 95, in the 1995. At that time, he worked on experiment using the first post-accelerated post radioactive beam of nitrogen-13. And the main topics were uh, nuclear astrophysics and elastic scattering. Then he got a postdoctoral position for two years at Ganil, so in 1995, and worked uh, within the Orion group, composed by Galin, Guéraud, Lot, uh, Péger, even Xavier Ledoux also was there. Uh, for, the Jugend, for the youngest of the audience, Orion was a red neutron calorimeter, which is still visible in front of the physical building of, uh, of Ganil, in fact. And uh, at that time, he performed experiments on allonuclei, but uh, work also for nuclear waste management. Then in uh, 1997, he got a permanent position as teaching assistant at University of Caen, Normandy, and was recruited at LPC Caen. He realized several experiments with Tonnerre and uh, another neutron detector for low energy neutron coming from beta delayed emissions. In parallel, he also participated to the beginning of the nascent uh, project LPC Trap, uh, ion pole trap developed at LPC Caen and operated at, uh, at the low energy beam line Lirat at Ganil. He progressively focused his research then on standard model tests of high precision on the low energy sector by studying nuclear beta decay since uh, uh, 2005. And in the 2018, he became the scientific responsible of the MORA project. I think he will talk about it in a, in a few minutes. And also became, in, the, in 2019, the head of the Fundamental Interaction Group, which is called Griffon, at LPC Caen. So as you can see, uh, Etienne is a quite accomplished nuclear experimental physicist, uh, having worked in a lot of domains of scientific interest, astrophysics, nuclear structure, beta delay, decay, weak interaction and low energy standard model tests. Also, Etienne has been and is still involved in research development and instrumentation for nuclear physics and obviously ion trap. First of all, I want to, to make a comment because uh, I omit to say something when I said that uh, you were, uh, Etienne, responsible of the MORA project. It was at LPC Caen and the scientific spokesperson is uh, Pierre de La Haye and you are deputy spokesperson, scientific spokesperson. So, uh, as I said before, uh, I, I am pleased to hand over to Etienne, who is going to talk about uh, the search of new physics beyond the standard model using nuclear beta decay. So, uh, Etienne, uh, now it's your turn. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Olivier. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for this inv invitation, which gives me the opportunity to uh, presents uh, the main projects we have at LPC Caen and in nuclear physics to test the standard model. And then after a general description of the subject, I will present uh, the first project we have developed at Gunil using our LPC trap setup and which has led to uh, the perspectives we have today on the search for exotic currents beyond the V-A theory on the termination of VUD uh, using the mirror decays and on the search for new sources of CP violation in, to try to explain the large matter antimatter asymmetry observed in the universe. So um, the nuclear beta decay is a semi leptonic process which is governed by the weak interaction and as such it is of course a possible tool to precisely study this fundamental interaction. And the question is how? Um, Experimentally, we can reach uh, an important sensitivity thanks to the precise measurements of correlation between the bodies which are emitted after the beta decay. And we can also measure very precisely the FT values of the transitions, which means, uh, in fact, precise measurements of masses, half-lives, and branching ratios. Uh, and this can be done either in pure decays of Fermi or gamma stellar type or in mirror transitions, which are characterized by large Fermi and gamma stellar uh, components. And these precision measurements enable us to perform specific tests of the standard model, like on the search for um, 
of the existence of uh, exotic currents beyond the V minus A theory on the violation of fundamental symmetries and on the conservation of the vectorial current in the nuclear medium and with the subsequent unitarity of the quark mixing matrix. So, of course, uh, these tests perform at low energy are complementary to measurements performed at higher energy in particle physics, in which uh, the exotic mediating particles, which are linked to uh, the, um, the study processes, are produced as soon as the energy available in the collision is sufficient. So at low energy, uh, the method use is a little bit more subtle. And recently, an effective field theory has been applied and uh, to create a strong link between the two methods. And this comparison enable us to clearly target what are the interesting experiments we have to perform at low energy in nuclear beta case. So at low energy, uh, often the traces of this new physics is often uh, are often hidden in correlation between the particles and such a distribution of even shown here can be deduced from the fermi gordon rule in which we have considered the general form for the beta decay hamiltonian respecting only the lorentz, lorentz invariance and um, so the new physics is hidden in the different terms occurring here and of course in the coefficient in front of these terms and practically, this is the experimental setup used that will select the terms in which the experiment is sensitive. For instance, if the decaying uh, nuclei are not polarized, then we can arrange a setup to make it sensitive to this angular correlation between the two leptons. And such a scalar product here is invariant under parity or time reversal operations. And in this case, little a, uh, drastically depends on the existence of exotic currents of scalar or tensorial type beyond the V minus A theory. And, and uh, the choice of an adequate pure transitions enable to properly probe the contribution of one specific current. Now, it's also crucial to mention that the field inference term with its little b coefficient here is always present in the data. It's supposed to be in, in the standard model. But in fact, as you can see, it has a large sensitivity to this coupling constant thanks to its linear dependence on the coupling constant, while little a has a quadratic dependence. So uh, because the neutrino is very difficult to detect, all the experiments devoted to the determination of little a, in fact, measure a quantity which depends on the energy of the recall ions. And in fact, it is their real sensitivity to little b, which makes this experiment more or less sensitive to new physics. This very important feature was clearly emphasized in this paper published five years ago, in fact. So of course, we can determine directly the value of little b, but this is difficult because it requires to measure very precisely the beta energy spectrum shape. And this is difficult because of the beta scattering. So we can say that more or less this method was avoided uh, so far, but recently, there are several projects which are developed around the world to try to perform uh, such an experiment, such experiments, and these projects are based on advanced technologies. So it's also important to mention that uh, a strong constraint can be provided by the uh, in the scalar sector by the very precise determination of the FT values in pure family transition, and I will mention it uh, later in my presentation. So a very important question now concerns the precision, the precision which is required in this experiment. So a global analysis, I will also uh, describe in a few minutes, uh, has revealed that uh, at least a precision of 0.1% is needed to stay competitive with high, with high energy physics experiments, and this in the measurements of little a in pure transition. This strong constraint can be slightly relaxed in the measurements in mirror decays for which little a is uh, uh, is measured to uh, determine very precisely the mixing ratio between the gamma of terror and the family components in the decay. I will also discuss it later in my presentation. Anyway, these are our precision experiments which forces to uh, respect some points in these experiments like the cleanliness of the source, 
which has to be located in vacuum if the recall ions are detected because of their very low kinetic energy. And for such purpose, ion traps and atom traps seems to be an uh, interesting tool, a uh, precious tool to create an adequate environment. Uh, these experiments also require high statistics, and this can be ensured thanks to the development of new generation, generation of facilities to uh, provide the most intense radioactive beams as possible. Of course, it's of use with uh, uh, an adequate arrangement of the setup and the use of the new data acquisition system, which enable to drastically reduce the dead time. But one very important thing is that these experiments require um, uh, a good control of all the systematic effects, and this requires a deep knowledge of the experimental setup. With often um, the generation of the most realistic simulations as possible. So uh, a PC trap setup was then developed to perform such measurements, and uh, the main device, as you can see here, is a transparent pole trap, which enables to detect in coincidence the beta particles and the recording ions. And in this experiment, little a was it used from uh, the shape of the distribution of the time of flight of the recon ions. So in the simulation here, performed for helium-6, uh, you can see the differences expected between the two extreme cases, a pure tensor and a pure axial distribution. So it's very important to mention here now that this helium-6, with its main characteristics given here, and the fact that it has a high projection rate at Ganil, for instance, at spiral, makes this candidate an ideal case, an ideal candidate to check uh, the existence of tensorial current in the wake interaction. So I just want to, man to mention, to add two comments on these simulations. The first one concerns the rise time of this time of flight distribution. You can see that this rise time depends very weakly on the value of it today. That it means that, in fact, you can use also this data to tune, to manage some parameters of uh, uh, the experiment. And the second comment concerns the two charge states, which are here simulated. In fact, the highest one is due to the shake of process. So uh, this is a possible ionization of the recoil due to the sudden change of the nuclear charge during the beta decay. And of course, um, the ratio between the two charge state distribution here uh, enter in the systematic uncertainty. And in our setup, we separate the charge states thanks to a recoil ion spectrometer I will show you in a few minutes. So this setup has been installed at Ganil and on the low energy beam line, the hut of the spiral facility, which delivers beams with such characteristics. So that suited for an efficient trapping. And that's the reason why we have designed and installed there an RFQ put a burncher to uh, handle the ions and ensure this efficient trapping, the pole trap, 3D pole trap here at the end of the, of the scheme. So I just want to mention one parameter in this slide, this is the accumulation time given here. In fact, this is a duty cycle, of these experiments. So 200 milliseconds means that each 200 milliseconds, we extract a bunch from the RFQ and send it to the boat trap to perform the correlation measurements. And actually, we kept the ion during 160 milliseconds only uh, to perform these uh, correlation measurements. And then we have extracted the ions to measure the background during the 40 millisecond left. So that means that we had a sample of background at each cycle, and this is very important uh, in such uh, precision experiment. So here you have um, the, the detection setup. Historically, we have used two detection setup. We have simply added this recognition spectrometer in 2010 to separate the charge states. Otherwise, uh, they are equivalent. You have the trap here on the left and the two detectors used to detect the beta particles and the recording ions in coincidence. So the trigger was given by a signal in the scintillator used to detect the beta particles, and then we recorded several distributions and parameters, which says unable to drastically reduce the background to have a certain control on the systematic effects, but also this enables to check the consistency on the different results we can obtain at the end. So we have published the first value uh, for little a with a set of data taken before the installation of the recon ion spectrometer. And the precision um, of um, 
This result had not reached at this moment the best known values, but in fact, it was the best results obtained for a pure gamma of stellar transitions and using a coincidence technique in which we were really confident thanks to the high degree of control we had on the different parameters of the experiment. At the same time, uh, this first experiment has also revealed uh, the weaknesses we had in the knowledge of our uh, setup to uh, fix and limit the systematic uncertainty, which was totally dominated by the cloud size, which is here uh, symbolized by a mean temperature of the cloud. And you see that um, we had really, in a more precise experiment, we had really to have a better control, a better knowledge of this parameter. So finally, we have succeeded to collect a large number of events uh, to, um, so let's say, significantly improve these first results. And from this experiment, uh, we have first determined the Chekhov probability for the first time. Uh, in fact, for this purpose, the EM61 plus is a very interesting case because it remains only one electron in this, uh, in this system. And that means that we don't need to consider multi-electron processes in the ter theoretical approach to uh, describe uh, this process. And in fact, this can be considered as a textbook case to, to check the sudden approximation which is commonly used in the description of this process. And that's never been done before this experiment. So concerning little a, um, the accuracy of uh, the simulation we had at this moment using different codes was not just sufficient to reproduce all the exponential distributions we have obtained in the experiments. That's, that is that clearly we had to improve, as already mentioned, the modeling of the ion cloud uh, inside the trap. And that's the reason why we have developed um, specific code based on calculations on GPUs and which includes both the interaction of the ions with the gas inserted in the, in the trap to cool the, the, the cloud and the space charge effects in realistic fields. So the aim here is really to produce the most realistic decaying source as possible. And so after several attempts, uh, we have decided to follow this procedure. So a decay is generated in a realistic cloud provided by Clauda, and then the beta particles are tracked in John 4 while the recall ions are generated, are propagated sorry, in realistic fields in uh, using the simion code. So in practice, the experimental data are fitted using several simulations in which we have changed the temperature of the cloud. We have considered different values of little a and the two charge states. And in addition to the three corresponding um, parameter, the distance between the center of the trap and the recall ion detector is also left free in the fit because, of course, this distribution of events depends also on this parameter. So the recent results we have obtained are really promising. So in the procedure, time of flight distribution is first fitted with uh, the distribution I've presented before. And then after, the consistency is checked with the other distribution measured in the experiment, like the beta spectrum and the position of the two particles on their respective detectors. So in all the spectra shown here, the simulated distributions are always superimposed on the experimental ones. And you can see that in all spectra, we have a very good agreement between uh, the, these distributions. But nevertheless, we have still now to consider this analysis as a preliminary one, simply because the statistics used in the simulations are not yet sufficient to provide a relevant parameter, to provide a value which means something which makes sense, in fact, in terms of statistics. But this is really promising. And uh, the first study of systematics seems to indicate, indicate that we could expect um, total relative precision at the end on little a lower than 1.5%. Um, so in this table, you have the existing data and uh, existing results and data still under analysis. And this table reveals, well, roughly that there is not, in, well, at least in the tensorial sector, there is almost nothing new this since this very um, 
famous experiment performed by Johnson and co-workers in 1963. And in this context, our PC trap experiment is still probably the present most sensitive experiment because two reasons. The first one is the expected um, relative precision I've just presented here. But the second one is especially its sen special sensitivity to little b, which seems to be the highest in the back-to-back -back configuration we have chosen for a PC trap. So it is really motivating to continue this analysis, to publish the value we hope at the end of this year or maybe uh, next year. But nevertheless, we have to ask this question, is this still relevant in the more global analysis, including all the existing results and especially results that can be extracted from high energy physics. So uh, the present situation is, um, let's say summarize on this slide, is it a little bit complicated, but I will try to explain several things. Um, so in this global analysis, all the existing results from nuclear physics are considered to um, put constraints on CS and CT. And um, let's say at the beginning without any assumptions on the helicity of the neutrino. That's why you have here the prime constant separating this graph. So in principle, in left-handed current, CS prime equals CS, but here uh, the right-handed currents are also considered in these graphs. And you see these two lines here uh, for the left-handed and the right-handed, okay? Um, so the relevance values results obtained for little a describe cycles in this graph simply because of their quadratic dependence on the complete constants. And in fact, the center and the radius of these cycles are tuned by the dependence on little b, which with the uncertainty on the value uh, measured in the experiment fixes also the thickness of the allowed bands. That means, in fact, the um, sensitivity to the exotic couplings. So um, there are other results also considered in these graphs, this global analysis, like, for instance, this um, very precise determination of the mean uh, corrected FT values in the pure family transitions, which provide BF, little b, and this is this very tiny blue band appearing here. So it is clear when you look at this graph that uh, the constraints given by little b are really better than the constraints given by little a, but they are totally insensitive to left to uh, right handed currents. Okay. So finally, on your all, this um, global analysis leads to such constraints on CS and CT in left and right um, sectors, in the left and right sectors. So now it is crucial to compare these results and these constraints to what could be extracted from uh, high energy physics. So this study was performed recently in these uh, reviews uh, where they have considered um, a specific channel in uh, data uh, collected by the CMS collaboration. So this analysis was performed in the frame on EFT, an effective field theory, and this analysis leads to this very small green cycle here, you see. So don't worry, the situation is not so dramatic, it appears at first sight, uh, because if you look in details here in the left sector, the constraints uh, deduced from the nuclear physics experiments are still competitive with this one. Okay, but what is clear is that in the future, we have to improve our precision level at least at 10 to the minus three, if we want to keep this complementarity with the high energy physics and especially with the future um, results expected at LHC. And so there are several projects in the world with the aim of reaching such a precision. But for us, it is clear that it is not reasonable to consider it with a PC trap. And the main drawback is due to the fact that a little a is deduced from the distribution of events, which requires to have um, a perfect knowledge of all the parameters able to modify a little bit this distribution of events, and finally using, let's say, a rather complex system. So this is a real blocking point. Uh, we think that it can be avoided using other methods. Um, for instance, method in which the parameter can be deduced from the difference in data, but uh, obtained with the same setup. This enables to drastically reduce the systematic effect. And it is the case 
in the wizard project, we are now developing at Isolt. So wizard mean weak interaction studies with argon the T2 decay. So on the decay scheme here, you see that uh, the pure Fermi transitions in the argon the T2 reaches a level which is proton unstable. And that means that the proton is emitted during the recoil of the chlorine the T2. And then in turn goes a kinetic shift, which is proportional to little a. So in fact, we can deduce little a by measuring the difference in energy in the proton peaks. Okay, so moreover, the lifetime of this level is very short. So of the order of 10 to the minus 18 seconds. So that means that we can in fact um, implant directly the radioactive nuclei in a catcher in a solid target, which strongly simplifies the setup. And this also provides a real gain in the statistics. So on the scheme here on the right, we can see that the, all the betas which are emitted in this hemisphere, the up hemisphere, will be guided to their detectors using the strong magnetic field of the former witch coil at Isolt. And then the proton uh, particles will be detected in coincidence, either roughly at zero degree or pi with respect to the beta direction. So um, in this picture, here, you have the proton spectra in energy taken in singles for the down and up detectors, down and up detectors. And you see principle, another advantage of the argon the T2, it's also decayed through pure gamma theory transitions. And that means that in principle, in one single experiment, we will be able to determine both AF and AGT. Um, so we have performed a first experiment, first test experiment in 2018 using material from scratch. And this was in fact to test the feasibility of this experiment. So you see that the catcher was rather thick, 6.7 micron, and the silicon detectors used to detect the proton had, uh, had a limited uh, resolution around 35 keV at the mean energy of the proton emitted in the pure Fermi transitions. And despite of this, we have obtained results with an unexpected level of precision. So again here, you have in the middle, uh, the proton spectra. Uh, for the up and down detector, the black curve is the singles, the two cases, and the red curves correspond to the coincidence with the beta particles. And you see that the shift in energy is reversed. This is expected uh, because mainly the chlorine zertitude will be emitted in the direction opposite to the direction of the beta particles. That means in the same direction that the proton detected in the down detector, that's why their mean energy is higher in this case. And it is a reverse, of course, for the up detectors. So with this um, test experiment, we have succeeded to publish the third best results in the world in the scalar sector. It was a little bit more complicated in the case of gamma of terror, the gamma of terror transitions because of a lack of statistics and the reduced resolution in the proton detectors. But so this is a really, really promising project, um, and the projection seems to indicate that the 0.1% in the precision seems accessible, at least for the scalar sector, and this using um, a new completely dedicated setup with a thinner catcher, 0.5 micron here, and more proton detectors around this catcher with an improved uh, resolution of at least 10 kV at this energy, and this is consistent with tests we have performed at lpc -Con with new preamplifier. So um, this project has been, the experiment has been accepted at ISOLT, and maybe it will be uh, scheduled in the fall of this year, in the uh, situation allows it. And it's forcing to keep the setup there um, until the availability of the DAISY hole, uh, in which we could expect higher intensities for the beam and also maybe other interesting candidates to perform further experiments. Okay, so the second interesting and promising uh, project in which we are involved, the pc uh, this is the B-START. Uh, START means search for tensor interactions in nuclear beta decay. So indeed here, the aim of the, of the project is to measure directly little b in the pure gamma of terror decay of helium-6 again, because this is again, the best candidate to do this experiment. So I mentioned before that it's complicated to perform such an experiment because of the beta scattering. So here, the idea is to use a colorimetric method in which all the beta particles will be detected. So we can develop a such a method either at low energy or high energy, in the sense of nuclear physics, of course. At low energy, the beam is implanted 
then at the surface of a first detector, and then the second one is moved to encapsulate the decaying source and create a normal for pi detection. At higher energy, the beam is implanted in death, the detector this time at the death, which is higher than the range of the beta particles. And again, all the beta particles will be detected. So of course, these two methods suffer from different systematic effects. And Ganil is probably the unique site in the world able to host the two setups at Lirat and Nice. So uh, this project is now funded, uh, and uh, the first experiments have been accepted by the Ganil pack. In the first phase, the two methods will be tested, and in the second phase, the most promising one will be further developed and improved to perform uh, the final experiments. So we hope, I would say, hot news in one month now, because the first experiment is scheduled at Clirat in three weeks. OK, so um, can we conclude that it is the end of LPC tripe-like setup? Um, not necessarily, in fact. If you remember, I'm, I have already shown this slide at the beginning of my presentation and giving the required precision in the disease different experiment, I mentioned that this very strong constraint can be a little bit relaxed in the case of the mirror transitions for which little a is measured uh, to determine the mixing ratio uh, between the gamma stellar and the Fermi components. So this is a crucial parameter. If we want to uh, test the CVC hypothesis using mirror decays instead of the usual uh, pure family transitions. So a quick reminder on this subject, um, you can consider that this slide is still, uh, was still up to date three years ago, let's say. Um, so the best method to test the CVC hypothesis consists in the very precise determination of the corrected FT values in pure family transitions, 14 for the best, which are here. And this means the very precise measurements of half-lives, branching ratios, and masses, but also the very precise calculations of set of theoretical corrections, which roughly represent um, global correction lower than one person. But this is very important, this is even crucial because this, today this is the limiting uh, factors for the precision in uh, VUD. So the CVC hypothesis is verified at a level of 10 to the minus four, which enables to determine VUD appearing here with a unique um, precision, which is still today considered as the best one in the particle physics booklet. In the case of the mineral transitions, the same parameters have to be measured with, in addition, this mixing ratio appearing here in this uh, formula. In this case, this is the limiting parameter, which was only measured in five uh, decays uh, used in this, in this review with a limited precision until recently. And this explains a loss of about a factor of 10 we observed in the precision on VUD. This obvious in this figure here, this graph presenting the relative precision on the different parameters used to determine VUD in nine interesting uh, mirror transitions. And you can see that this is always the mixing ratio, which is the least known quantity represented by this red bar here, even never measured in many transitions. And of course, since this old paper, um, the community involved in, uh, the, in, the, in the field as improved parameters, but they have essentially improved half life branching ratios and masses. And some of these very important improvements, some of these improvements concern directly four of the five decays which were used in this review uh, to deduce VUD from the mirror transitions. And if we consider only this improvement to determine VUD, you see that there is no effect no effect on the precision of VUD. This is a clear indication that to test the CVC hypothesis and to improve the precision of VUD, we are really to improve the precision on the mixing ratio by measuring correlations in nuclear beta decay. And in fact, such measurements have been performed recently at Triumph and Princeton, where they have measured the beta asymmetry parameter in the decay of potassium 37 and neon 19. For instance, at Triumph, the decaying source was confined in a main optical trap of three nuts, and the beta particles were detected in the Z direction here in these two detectors. And capital A was determined from the difference accounting rates between these two detectors, but also for two different uh, 
vaporization vectors of uh, the on the of the of the, of the nucleus sorry in the z direction too it's very important to note now already that they have obtained in this experiment a very exceptional degree of polarization using this optical pumping method higher than 99 percent and this has enabled them to determine the a beta symmetry parameter with a relative precision of 0.3 person never reached before this experiment with this time a direct impact on the precision of VUD of course and this is not the most sensitive case in this table the value surrounded in blue here indicates the minimal precision you can expect on VUD when measuring capital A in potassium 37 with a relative precision of 0.5%, and also assuming that this is the only parameter contributing in the precision. So from this table, it is clear that we can have a better sensitivity when measuring little a in the decay of these nuclei, which are all produced at Ganil, for instance, at Spora, with the high intensities. And it is the case for argon 35 and neon 19 for which, in fact, we have already taken data with LPC trap in the past. Here you have the time of flight distribution we have measured in the, in the two cases, from which, of course, we have already extracted the shake of probability with an excellent agreement. In the case of argon 35 excellent agreement with the theory, it was a little bit more complicated for neon 19. We have observed an overestimation of the neutrals and highest charge states in the calculation, which suggests that here, probably we have to consider the electron correlations for such system. And this is here um, a new challenge of, for our colleagues of nuclear phys of atomic physics. Sorry. And now for little a, um, the total amounts of uh, events collected in neon 19 wasn't was that sufficient to improve anything. But in the case of argon 35, we have collected a large amount of good events, which correspond to such a statistical uncertainty of little a. So here we have really a potential high precision result. And the consequences on uh, the mixing ratio and when VUD are estimated here um, on this slide, considering two extreme situations. The ideal one, which is not reachable in fact, but in which we consider that the two kinds of uncertainties are equal and a conservative one in which I have taken the systematic uncertainty we have uh, estimated now in the uh, analysis of helium-6. And here you have the impact on the precision on the mixing ratio. So we observe an improvement in the two cases with, of course, again, a direct effect on the precision on the VUD, even the worst situation. We are here almost at the same level of precision than uh, the precision obtained in the potassium 37 experiment I've presented before. So this is really motivating to continue this analysis and to complete this analysis after the completion of the helium-6 analysis, it is clear. Um, and it is also motivated by two new discoveries in this field. The first one concerns the theoretical corrections calculation which have been reevaluated recently. And first, this common radioactive correction appearing here is for everybody. So this common radioactive correction, the new value is given here, and it's really better than the previous one. But a problem arises because uh, you see that the mean value has also changed, and it's not compatible with the previous one. So there is a dramatic effect on the unitarity of the CKM due to this new value. So directly after this first re-estimation, um, the same group has re-evaluated other correction using their new code. This is one concern, the delta NS suffering here. NS means nuclear structure. So these are corrections um, uh, which are uh, prop, uh, proper, uh, specific, sorry, to each case. And this new re-evaluation had two consequences. The first one is a loss of precision in the mean corrected FT values, you see here, but with a, a slightly a lower discrepancies of the neutrality of the CKM matrix. So it's important to uh, mention, you see on the right here, that today the results are totally, the, the, 
the, the precision is totally dominated by these theoretical corrections. And then any change in this correction has a direct effect on the final results. And of course, Ardian Turner have published um, some months ago their new review on the subject. They make that since uh, for more than 30 years. You see here, this is a, a full compilation of all existing results in the subject. So concerning the pure family transitions. And this is the first time that the new value, the new published value is less precise than the previous one. So um, the conclusion in this paper is cautious, of course, it's less direct than usually, but this sentence on the line here in blue is clear and it indicates um, new tension in this unitarity test. So it, this, for me, this is a clear invitation to perform new measurements and especially to try to check the, these uh, theoretical corrections. And the second discovery concerns the mirror transitions themselves and what they can bring in a more general um, analysis of all the data. So this paper was published, let's say about one month ago, and it reveals that if we relax all the standard model constraints, so allowing physics beyond the V minus A theory and right and deep currents, then the present um, mirror decays results already bring about a factor of three in the VUD determination. So this is clear here on this um, graph, uh, which present VUD for different frames. Um, the, the, <clears throat> the, the blue point corresponds to the pure Fermi results and uh, the, 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 in the red points, the mirror transitions results have been considered too. So this is in the frame of the standard model here and four different extensions without right and right currents and with one hundred current. And you see the improvement we have today here with the existing mirror results. So this is a clear invitation for me to continue to publish the value for argon 35 first, certainly, but also probably later to continue to perform new measurements in this mirror decays. So um, <clears throat> to finish my presentations, I would like to um, present also another kind of experiment for which uh, TRAPS seems, again, um, an adequate device to uh, uh, provide a, a clean source for the measurements. And uh, again, I have presented already this distribution of even and some terms here are sensitive to the violation of uh, uh, fundamental symmetries, like the last one here, which is hot under uh, the time reversal operation. That means it's sensitive to CP violation thanks to the CPT theorem. And then in principle, we can arrange a setup to make it sensitive to this term. So we have simply to, uh, we have again to measure a beta neutrino coloration, but from um, a polarized decaying source, okay? That means that we have simply on the paper to adapt a polarization system to an implicit trap like setup. So um, the first question concerns the, the potential candidate to perform such an experiment. So the expression of capital D reveals that such an experiment, such a measurement has sense only in mirror decays for which the value of rho allows capital D to be different from zero. Now you see also that um, the factor here in front of the imaginary part depends on the value of rho, but also on capital G, and then the sensitivity to the new physics. This is the new physics in the imaginary part here. The sensitivity to the new physics depends on this factor named here, capital F. And for instance, we gain a factor of 1.5 when measuring D in the decay of magnesium 23 instead than in the, the, the instead than in the uh, of uh, the neutron decay. Sorry. We have also to consider uh, the final state interaction because the beta particles interact with their environment through electromagnetic effects and some process here depend on the recoil motion and that means they mimic a non-zero D value called the FSI which in principle are well computed in a given theoretical approach computed with a, uh, high precision but they had never been tested so far. Okay so the main motivation for a capital D measurement is uh, linked to the fact that the CP violation observed today in Mizondi case is not sufficient to, uh, uh, to explain the large matter and two-matter asymmetry observed in the universe. It has never been observed in ordinary, ordinary matter. 
So the current best results was published more than 30 years ago in the decay of neon 19 with a precision of 6 10 to the minus 4, and more recently in the neutron decay with a precision of 2 10 to the minus 4. So such a measurement is in competition with the measurement of an electric dipole moment in the neutron, which appears to have a better, a higher sensitivity to new physics, but in fact, this is not true for all the possible extensions of the standard model, and especially models involving leptoquarks. quarks. And also it seems that the interpretation of the NEDM measurements is less direct, less obvious than uh, a measurements of capital E. So all in all, we are really seeing that there is enough room today for a new high precision measurements of D in nuclear beta decays. So our project is named MORA, MORA for meters origin from the radioactivity of trapped and laser oriented ions. So the dimension is based on the use of a trap, which can create an ideal source for the beta recoil measurements. And moreover, the optical pumping method is a very efficient method to polarize the cloud, the confined spaces. Remember this um, excellent polarization degree observed in the potassium 37 experiment at uh, Triumph. And finally, in Europe, only some facilities can provide the beams of interest. And this is the reason why MORA will be first installed in the XOL4 hall, IG Vascula, which fulfills all the conditions um, on the beams. And also, they have the lasers to uh, polarize uh, the ions. So the first um, candidate study will be the magnesium 23, because uh, it has several advantages, of course. The gain sensitivity on the dimension, the production rates, which are sufficient at Givascula and Caen to complete the project. And a very important thing, a very important point is that it can already be uh, polarized today using existing lasers and this optical pumping method, which consists to uh, scan the perfine structure of the ion. And uh, in fact, the multiple interactions of the ions with the lasers at an adequate frequency finally forces the nuclei to be in the research state at, with an adequate polarization and uh, orientation, I would say, of the angular momentum. So this method has never been tested in a 3D pole trap, but according to uh, simulations, we also expect a large polarization degree of the order of 99% in a short time, and this using a pulse laser. So this is a very interesting candidate, but it has several drawbacks, of course, like the contamination, which is expected in sodium 23, in principle, we will have solutions to limit this contamination. The half life is rather long. We can change this, of course. Um, and this could limit the quantity, the number of uh, coincidence recorded, especially when considering the present characteristics of the 3D pole trap we have in an PC trap in terms of ion capacities and ion, ion lifetime. So these um, limitations are due to the fact that the, the trapping potentials is not perfectly quadrupolar. And then for more, we have optimized the new trap in order to drastically reduce all the harmonics of order ion than two, but also to increase the detection solid angle around the trap here. So with this uh, improved trapping field, we can expect important improvement in the characteristic of the trap, which would enable to collect a sufficient statistics in a reasonable uh, time of data taking. And the increase of detection solid angles angle enables to uh, optimize the total number of um, detectors around the trap. You can see on this scheme here, the trap is in the middle. This frame supports the different modules of detection used to um, detect in coincidence the beta particles and the recall ion. And uh, sensitivity to capital D is enhanced for a relative angle of 135 degrees. Capital D itself will be deduced from the difference, the counting rates for two orientation of the uh, polarization vector here and considering also different detector pairs. So this is a method which principle enable to drastically reduce the systematic effects. So uh, for the recon ions, we will use um, the usual microchannel plate associated with the position sensitive anode. While for the beta particles, uh, we have developed uh, specific fossil detectors based on plastic scintillators. So uh, the first parameter measure at Givascula will be the polarization degree. Um, 
this is a parameter we have to control in the main experiment for capital D. That means that we need another setup to uh, measure to control it. And what we plan to do is, is to measure the beta symmetry parameter using two segmented silicon detectors located downstream and upstream of the trap. And again, capital A will be deduced from the difference, the conic rates in these two detectors and for two orientation of the polarization vectors. So capital A is known, sufficiently known, because we don't need, in fact, a precise knowledge of uh, this polarization degree if the value is higher than 80 percent, and this is widely expected from the simulations. So here you have the status of uh, the project. All is built, the injection line, the main chamber, the trap, and it's presenting commissioning at LPCCon. Uh, the detectors are tested at Ganil and LPCCon. And in principle, if the situation enables enable it, um, all the setup should be fully tested during the summer. And we could then expect an installation, uh, consider an installation in the fall to start the first measurements at GVascula. So the first measurements will be this uh, capital A, the beta symmetry parameter, for which it should be performed uh, rather quickly, about one week of data checking. <clears throat> and then for capital D at GVascula, we, would ex we could expect to improve the best precision obtained now from NEON 19. And this with an accumulation of about one month of uh, data. Um, this is reasonable before the move of the setup in the DAISY hall, where in principle here, we could expect to improve the present best pre precision obtained in nuclear physics and capital D. That means also considering uh, the neutron uh, results. This would be probably a very interesting test for the final state interaction effects for the first time. And then in the second step, we can consider to perform a new experiment, consider a new candidate to have a better sensitivity to a new physics. For instance, the calcium 39. This is a very interesting candidate because it can be already today polarized with existing laser. But its main problem, its crucial problem, is the production here, which requires to, um, to perform technical developments. And that's the reason why we have um, submitted uh, an LOI uh, last, um, last month at Ganil to do that. OK, so this is a summary of what I've presented, a quick summary. Uh, I've tried to show you that uh, I have precision measurements we perform in nuclear beta decays are still a sensitive tool to test the standard model complementary to our energy physics. Formation is often hidden correlations, for instance, between the particle momenta, and then this enables, in this case, to search for exotic currents beyond the V minus A theory by measuring this uh, correlation in pure transitions, or this enables to determine the mixing ratio in the mirror transitions, crucial to test the CVC hypothesis. Um, using these mirror transitions. And is a sp if a spin is added in the correlation, then these data become uh, sensitive to the violation of fundamental symmetries and the search for new sources of CP violation become then accessible to experiment. And this is the aim of the MORA project. Okay, so here you have um, <clears throat> a list of the different labs and colleagues involved in the different projects. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.